Okay, today it's more about arithmetic and geometric series. And what you have on the board here, since it seems to be adding three each time, is a simple arithmetic series. A couple formulas that come into play. A sub n is any term, is the original, and then what? Plus, you have this memorized yet? 1 minus n. Ah, uh -huh, n minus 1. Okay, keep going. Do you have them memorized? Times d. All right, I know, I told you you're going to have a sheet for this, but if you don't have them well enough in hand to, like, have the simplest one memorized, then you're going to be really lost on which formula goes where. Okay, so it's actually better to think of it as memorize it, but we'll have a backup there in case you forget a little part of a formula. You know what I mean? All right. So now this is the original one, which is what in this case? 4 plus n minus 1, which would be how many terms there are, minus 1, which is how many terms are there? 12, 12 minus 1. And then times the d, which is the difference, also known as the common difference in this case, 3. There we go. So the is this the sum of all the terms? No. This is the what of all the terms? What did I just figure out? The what term? Yeah, and if I substituted n as 12, I should really put a 12 here. Do you get how that's saying it's a sub 12? It's a 12th term? Okay, so it's 12th term is going to be what? Well, hopefully you figured it out. 4 plus 12 minus 1 is 11. 11 times 3 is 33. 33 plus 4 is 37. Raise your hand if you had 37. Okay, good. Now, let me explain why there's 12 minus 1 right here. Do you get... If I just had three terms, there'd be two times that you actually did something to the original. Does that make sense? It's one less than how many terms there are. So it's like if there was 12 terms, then how many little swooshes would there be? 11 swooshes. That's why we need 11 right there. 11 sets of, we did something to it 11 times. All right. So, then how do you get the sum? If the 12th term is 37, it led up to 37. How do you get the sum of these? Well, there's a formula for that. Mr. V, do you remember which of these formulas that's on the board you should use for that? And over 2, and A0 parentheses plus... Good. Uh, plus n minus 1 in parentheses times d. Okay, good. Now, I hope you guys remember the little Friedrich Gauss story where he took the first term and the last term and he added them together and then he took the second term and the second to last term. Remember? And you added them all up and it added up to, well, in this case, if you went from 1 to 100. Take that and that and add them together, you get 101. And then you take this and this and add them together, and you get 101. And you take that and that and you add them together, and you get 101. And you keep doing that half of the number of terms that you have. If you had 100 terms, you can do that 50 times. So it ends up being 50 times 101. All right, this is the first term. That's the last term. We're adding them together. And then we're taking half of the number of terms that we have. All right, so did you do then, for this problem, half of the number of terms, so it would be 12 divided by 2 is 6 in the front, and then why don't you tell me the rest of it? And it's just, we just skip right to the last term. Instead of doing this whole formula, we already did it. What is the last term? 37. So 37 plus the 4 makes 41, and 41 times 6 is going to be our answer. 246. Raise your hand if you had 246. All right, good. Next, the summation notation for it. This sigma. n equals 1 to n equals what? 12. 
and I shouldn't say n equals up there, it's just 12. And this is the index. And this is where we write the little formula for it. Now, some kids are just good at doing this in their head. But what happens if that fails you? What if it's really complicated? All you have to do is put another formula right there. It keeps coming back to this formula. So let's put that formula right there, except with the numbers from this problem in it. A0, which is our starting number, which was what in this case? 4. So 4 plus n minus 1, which is, I'm going to leave it as an n. Because if we don't have a variable in this, there's no point of this whole thing. we got to stick 1 through 12 into the variable, right? Minus 1, and then times d. And d we just know by going that minus that. So it's 3. And there's your summation notation. Now, did some of you actually multiply that all the way out and get 3n minus 3 plus 4, which would be 3n, and the minus 3 and the plus 4 would be plus 1. And again, some of you might have just done that in your head. So why can't I just do that? Okay, when it gets really, really complicated, the way I just showed you will always work. You just take this original formula right here, and you can put it right there with our numbers in it. Let's do one last one for the number of puzzled looks I got on that one. I'd like to do one more. Write the sigma for this. Let's say it starts at 0, and you add 17 each time. And going up to, let's say, 25 terms. Just write the equation for it. Just write the sigma notation, I should, I'm sorry, for the summation. Did you say n equals 1 to 225? Raise your hand if you had that part right. Okay, good. Next part. SH on the right-hand side. What did you get for the summation, or for this part? Zero. Plus n minus 1 times 17. That's it. Awesome. Is that what you just did there? This is the A0 equation, or the AN. AN will be all this, A sub 0, which is 0, plus N minus 1 times D. N minus 1 times D. We knew A0 and we knew D, and so there we go. Now, some of you probably wrote 17, or sorry, 17N minus 17. That'd be okay. Yes, sir. Good question. You are allowed to multiply it out. You don't have to multiply it out. If you leave it in that form, I kind of like this form because it shows me exactly what you were doing. Your first term was 0. Then you're doing n minus 1 times your d, which is 17. If you multiply it out, I can see what your d is really easily. Because if you haven't multiplied it out and it says 17n, I'll know that you knew that the d was 17. All right. So that's a whole bunch of adding stuff. Let me see if you could go one more with the adding. Let's say I tell you that it's 2, and then I don't tell you what it is, and I don't tell you what it is, and then I say that it is uh, 16. Would you use, now I know this is an easy one that you could probably figure out in your head, but you use the formula, the appropriate formula, to figure out if this is a geometric, then what's the right formula for that? And if it is an arithmetic, what's the right formula for that? We're not talking about the sum here. I'm just asking you to figure out D, if it's arithmetic, and R, if it's geometric. Again, if I if I made this easy on purpose, don't 
penalize yourself by just doing it all in your head and going, oh, that's easy. You gotta know how to do it with a formula. If it's geo, what is it? If it's arithmetic, what is it? <clears throat> arithmetic has a D and geo would have an R. Okay, so you should have right away whipped out a formula. And I know I've got them written down on the board, and that's partially because you've got them on the test. So what's a geo formula? A sub n, any term, is given by a sub 0 times r to the n minus 1. What do we know so far? We know a 0. And we know a n as long as we define that as being the first, second, third, fourth term. So let's stick them in. A n is, oh wait, we don't know. We know a zero first anyways. So a zero right here, we're going to put in uh, two because that's our first term. And then a sub n is the ne next term we're going to talk about, and that's 16. And then that only works if I know that this to this was not just like one swoosh, okay? It, this is the fourth term, and therefore n is 4. And therefore, I don't know the r, but I know n is 4. So then did you have 16 equals 2 times r to the third, divide by 2 on both sides. You got 8 equals r to the third. And you get how you could have solved and got r equals 2. Ah! R equals R. R equals 2 that way. Raise your hand if you got that one right. Okay, good. Then, same idea with the arithmetic. The arithmetic formula. Take the arithmetic formula, stick the numbers into that, solve. Definitely easier. The numbers may not be as nice, but the formula should be easier. Mr. B in the back, tell me how what the formula is I'm supposed to be using here. So A of N. Give me the general formula first. A zero. Good. And now in this case, what do we know? Uh, well, A sub zero is two. Put in a two there. And then? So N. All right. That's 16. And that assumes what N? And therefore, 4 minus 1, which is 3 swooshes. All right, so I'm going to put a 4 right there. And 4 minus 1 is 3. So it's 16 equals 2 times 3d. And then I can solve for d really easy, right? So I subtract 2 from both sides. 14 equals 3d. So it comes out to a decimal but, or a fraction, but it's not that bad. d is 14 thirds. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. Okay. Last topic then. What if we need to take it to the next level when it comes to the, uh, the sum of a bunch of geometric terms? Okay, so like for instance, let's say we have uh, uh, 2 uh, times 3 is 6, times 3 is 18, and I wanted to know uh, what they added up to over their first uh, seven terms. Do you have a formula for that? Go ahead, use it. See what you think the sum of the first seven terms is. It's going to be big, but use the formula. And if the formula ends up coming out to a giant number you have to multiply, just leave it as a multiply problem.
So what's the formula? Okay, I think you just did the summation for a, a, if I had been doing one that was adding the same thing each time. That's an arithmetic. Do you get how I didn't, I'm not adding something each time, I'm doing, yeah. and so therefore there's a different formula. I don't think so. All right, there's another formula up there. Can anybody know which one it is? I'm sorry, I can't see the formula you're referring to. Is there a formula up here on the board that you think might work for adding up all the first seven terms? Go ahead, say it. You're right. So which one is it? Excellent. That's what we haven't done yet is that formula. Now, how could I have known it was a sum? It's got the S in the front. Okay. And how could I know that it, this one goes with multiplying? What else about the formula kind of clues you in that you're on the right track then? What's it got in it? An R. It's got an R in it. The fact it's got an R in it tells me that it's a common ratio and therefore this kind of question. So we're timesing by three, right? Is that important? Oh yeah. What's that called? Common ratio. Now, what if you can't see that so well? What if it's a weird combo? Like they start with one half, and then they go to one uh, eighth, and then they go to one over or something else. What are you going to do to figure out common ratio? Yes, sir. This one divided by this one. One eighth divided by one half. Aha, it does. So if you had one eighth divided by one half, what would the common ratio be? Well, that's exactly the same thing as one eighth. Instead of divided by a half, times by 2 over 1, and therefore this would become equal to what? All right, I, I just did something wrong, though. It's 1 eighth, sorry, sorry. 1 eighth times 2 over 1. This one stays the same. It becomes 2 over 8. Isn't that weird? It goes from 1 eighth to, and, or 1 half, and you multiply it by 2 eighths, which is the same thing as 1 fourth. So final answer. This one comes out to one fourth is my common ratio. So times one fourth. Do you get one half times one fourth is one eighth? Okay, so how did I get that again? I took this one divided by this one. So some of these are really easy to see. Six from two had to be times three. But it's really because six divided by two gives us the three. All right, so fill in this formula for me, Miss J. Uh, a is 7 over, I'm really lost. What? What's A? 2. Good. And then? And I should get rid of these. I'm sorry. I probably, you were probably referring back to that. Okay, keep going. 1 minus 3. Why are you choosing 3 for that? Not saying you're wrong, just asking. Because multiply by three, it's called the something. Common ratio, very good. Okay, and then I'm putting it to the n power. Oh, you know that number, seven. What's this? What's this? Why are you doing that? All right. So n is seven. Seven is the number of terms. Okay, and then what? One minus three. All right. So s of n. 2 times, holy smokes, that's a huge number, or a really, really small number, actually, because it's negative. Okay. 3 to the 7th, monstrous number. 1 minus 3, I can do in my head, negative 2. And so 2 divided by negative 2 is just negative 1 times this number is going to be negative, which makes it a positive, really big number. Does it make sense that it would be a really big number? When you're timesing something by 3, the numbers get really big really fast, and so eventually... Your last few terms of that are going to be monstrous. Okay. Three to the seventh isn't insanely big. You can get them bigger than that, of course. In fact, you can add things up to infinity. But before we get to that, I just want to do one more 
where it's geometric and you're not adding an infinite number of them, you're just adding a small number. You'll, you'll understand it more in a moment. Hold on. So if I had uh, 17, and now oh, let's make it 18, just make it a little more nice. Uh, and then I cut it in half each time. You get I'd have a 9 next. Then I'd have a 4.5 next. Do you get what I'm doing there? Okay. Do, was it a, is this a arithmetic or a geometric? Geometric. Is this therefore going to have a common ratio or common difference? Common ratio. And what do I do to get said common ratio? Divide what by what? 9 by 18. What's 9 over 18? One half. Do you get the common ratio is one half? Okay. What I want you to do is add up the first five numbers in this series. And I don't want you to do it by finding all five terms and then adding them. I want you to use the little formula I just gave you. First five. for a second. Let me try that one. All right, so on this problem, you should have stuck in the A, and the A, zero, is what I usually put. By the way, the answer, or the one that prints off for the test just has an A. Don't let that freak you out. Just plain A is like A, zero. Okay? So then, what is our A? Well, it's just the starting term, so I put it 18 there. And then, 1 minus R to the N, what's our R? What's our R? Say it if you know it. One half. And then R again is one half. And by the way, if you wanted this to be a summation, do you get how I could have just made this a great big summation from one to five? Okay. Backing up a notch. Uh, then our answer uh, depends on what n is. In this case, what do we want n to be? 5. So I put a 5 right there. And now I have 1 minus 1 half to the fifth power, which is 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half. And it ends up being 1 over 32. Probably didn't even go to figure that out, did you? But that's okay. So 1 minus 1 over 32, because 1 to the fifth is just 1. And that's basically a really small number times by 18, but then you divide it by, what's that equal to? One half. And so dividing by one half is really like times by two. Okay, so once you got done with this problem, this would make it pretty small, but then this would double it, and you'd be able to get your answer if you had numbers that were really nice or if you had a calculator to do it. Raise your hand if you stuck the numbers in the right spots. Okay, good. That isn't that hard if you know what the formula means. All right. I'm going to pause for a second before we move on to the last topic for today. Okay, so what's the last thing? The last thing is adding up a series of numbers that go forever. How could you possibly do that? If I had 1 and I add 3 and I get 4 and I add 3 and I get 7, if you add these all up to infinity, could that actually be equal to a number? Nope. So what did it equal? Infinity. You can make an equation for it, yes, but... If you actually needed the sum of all of these, it doesn't end, right? Because it just keeps going forever. But the weird thing is, with multiplication, you might think I'm going insane here. How could this possibly add up with multiplication? It's multiplying by 2. How could that possibly add up to some number? Hmm, that one doesn't either. But there's one that does. And that's like this. Let's say I start with 12, and then I cut it in half, and I make it 6, and I cut it in half, and I make it 3, and I cut it in half, and I make it 1.5, dot, dot, dot. Do you get how it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller? I want to make this a 3 over 2. Do you get that that one 
seems like it's kind of manageable size-wise. Like, they're getting really, really small, so it's not going to be a huge answer. This one, you actually can tell the answer. If you were to add all of them up, I know it seems like a complete, like, yeah, it's, it's going to keep adding something. How could you stop adding something? You can know what all of these parts add up to using this formula. S equals A, as in our A zero. You can throw a zero in there if you want to say A original, over 1 minus R. That's another formula you got to be able to use. That's for infinite series. Now, you, you uh, might note, and this is really important, that the R has to be between 0 and 1. What's that do? It keeps our rate to a fraction. If our rate was bigger than 1, do you get this 12 would be growing to bigger than 12 and bigger than 12? And if it's going to grow, if each term is successful, successively bigger, then you can't add up the infinite sum. But if it gets smaller like this, you can. It's a really simple answer. Would you please do it for this problem? You know what A0 is. You know what the rate is if you just think about it. Stick in the numbers. Figure it out. What's the sum of that infinite series? And what would it look like as a summation? It would look like this, the big E, the sigma, okay? And it would be n equals 1 to what? Infinity. And this little part right in here, it's our multiplication one, right? So let's just put in the general form for multiplication. Do you remember that one? The a sub n is what? a0 times r to the n minus 1, okay? With me on this so far? So what's a0 in our case for this problem? 12 times r. What's our r for this problem? How'd you get that? Well, you can always just take that divided by that. 6 divided by 12. 6 divided by 12 is... One half. Do you get where we're multiplying by one half each time? Does this qualify for using this formula? Yes, because we just figured out our r, and our r was one half. All right, and it's okay if r is between zero and one. Okay, so now we actually can finish this off. Our n minus one, uh, we leave as an n minus one, but our r has to be a one half. There's the summation for this. Raise your hand if you feel like you understand how I built that. The summation. Just this part right here. Do you get how I built that? Okay. I've seen most people seem to be nodding that they are with me on that. All it was was the original formula when I stick in A0 and I stick in my rate. Okay. And I go from 1 to infinity. All right. Now... What is the actual answer? Well, I stick in an A0 here, which is what? 12. 12 over what is 1 minus R? 1 minus 1 half. 1 minus 1 half is 1 half. So then it's 12 divided by 1 half. What's divided by 1 half the same as? Times 2, and therefore it is 24. Kind of cool, isn't it? That series adds up to 24. You take the first number, 12, and then you add all the other numbers up, they'll add up to 12 also. I, I get what, it is a weird concept that we're adding something an infinite number of times. All right, wait. You've got to write down what your homework is. I'm going to put it up here in a second. Hey, these are the problems that you are doing for your homework for tonight on number one. You're doing a, you can tell that's a sum because it's the big sigma. And I just want the answer, which is the sum of the first eight terms. On the next one, wait outside, please. Shut the door.
uh, on the next one, it's two, four, eight. Obviously, this one's a geometric series. And you're going to add the first 10 terms and determine the 20th term. And the last question is about an infinite or even a just a limited sum for this geometric series. So copy down this little series, and you are going to find the infinite sum of it, which I just showed you how to do and what the formula was for it. And then you're going to write it in summation notation and get the total of the first 10 terms for that one. And that's all I have for homework for you tonight. It's a very reasonable, manageable-sized assignment. And that's all I got for the video for today.